Hello, everybody. You are tuned into HCAM Sports Talk Live and joining us on the program, the head coach of Hopkinton Healers Girls Varsity Basketball, Mike Greco. And we also have the captains with us, Millie Sensini, Caroline Connell, and Alulu Murphy. How's everyone doing? Good. How are you? Very good. So Very this could be here. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Uh, so the season is underway, and uh, we hope that it'll stay underway. Uh, but you have a couple games under your belt. And, uh, Coach, uh, how has it been coaching this team so far and getting ready in uh, this very strange situation with the pandemic, of course? Uh, how's everything been? And uh, how's it been making some of the adjustments, such as uh, – practicing and playing in the masks and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, um, honestly, we're, it's been great. Um, we're just, I think really happy to even have a season. Um, we know that we're fortunate enough to be in a district where, you know, the um, administration is allowing us to play and, you know, providing us the resources we need to get out there. Uh, I can't say enough positive things about the group of girls I've got this year. Um, they, work hard. They're committed. Um, they have been, uh, you know, we, we returned 11 players, all 11 players, as a matter of fact. And so it's really been the same kind of core for several years now. Um, so the chemistry has been off the charts and um, there's been, you know, some challenges to deal with and some logistics that we've had to adjust to. But, you know, once, once practice starts or once the game starts, it really does just feel like basketball again. And so it's, it's been really great to be out there. We'll start off, uh, with Millie, how has your experience been uh, getting ready for the season? And I can only imagine it must be uh, tough playing with the masks. Uh, but how, how's it been so far? Um, yeah, it's definitely different, um, especially my masks, like you said. Um, and there's also a lot of new guidelines that we have to follow. But by this point, I think we've pretty much gotten used to it. Um, but other than that, practices have been fun. Um, the team has a really special bond, which is definitely important. Um, but given the circumstances we have now, um, I'm just hoping we get back on the court um, as soon as possible, because since the season is shorter this year, um, we're coming close to an end. Um, but we're definitely lucky to actually have a season this year. So. And Caroline, how has your uh, experience been uh, so far this season? And you must be excited to be back out there. Yeah, um, I've definitely been really excited. Like Millie said, um, we're just really lucky that we actually get to play and we've been very appreciative and Something that coach says like every day in practice and at every game is that we really don't know how many games and practices we're guaranteed to have. So I think everyone really does take that to heart and especially the seniors. It's hard knowing it's like our last season, but um, we really do take it to heart and work hard and practice every day and push each other and compete. And Lulu, how has your experience been? Um, I'm sure you're happy to be uh, back out there. Yeah, it's definitely nice to play with everyone again and it's definitely easier since we did return everybody so it, it, it definitely is a little harder to like learn new things like with the mass and with like the new guidelines but I think it definitely helps that like we all have already played together and everything. And uh, coach uh, what's been the toughest transition for you this year? I know there hasn't been uh, too many rule changes but are there any uh, procedures in practice or game procedures that have taken a bit of getting used to? I'd imagine uh, a procedure change such as the limited halftime breaks uh, must yeah. be a little more difficult for you. Yeah, I think, um, you know, the, the biggest the, the biggest things in the game have been, you know, there's no more baseline out of bounds plays and they're limiting the number of players you know, that are in the lane on a free throw, um, you know, so that's been a, been a minor adjustment, but I, I think you, you nailed it when, you know, you mentioned that there's no halftime, there's no more pregame real, you know, pregame talk and things like that. So it's kind of, we show up, we get off the bus, we stretch and we play, you know, and I'm sure the kids like it because they don't have to listen to me give a, you know, 10, 15 minute spiel on all the things we want to do that night. But um, that's been a little bit of an adjustment. So it's been, you know, a lot more preparing and practice the day before. And uh, we'll go around the table to the players here. Um, so, Millie, uh, what are some of the uh, things that you've been working on uh, in the preseason? And uh, what are some of your goals uh, for this season uh, to get your uh, 
game a little bit better? Um, I've definitely been working a lot on my shooting and ball handling and also my confidence. Um, this year, um, I feel like, especially during the beginning of the season, my confidence has gone up a little bit. Um, and I hope to stay that way through the rest of the season. So. And Caroline, how about you? Any goals this season or things that you're hoping to accomplish? Um, yeah, I would say the same thing with Millie. Um, definitely confidence is a big one. Um, the past few years, our team has kind of been like rebuilding. And um, like Coach says, he's seen like a big difference in our confidence and you can just see it in the way we're playing. And I think that kind of like the energy and just supporting each other and even going through everything that we're going through with the pandemic and stuff, I think it just kind of makes us stronger and like appreciate each other more. And Lulu, how about you? Um, what are some of the things that you're uh, hoping to accomplish uh, this season? Some of the things you've been working on? Um, definitely decision-making would be one of them and just like limiting turnovers and kind of just distributing the ball to everyone, I guess. Excellent. Um, so coach, uh, I know it's a shortened season, uh, but you have a lot of great returning players to this team. And it's certainly unfortunate that there's no postseason or anything like that, because I think this team could uh, potentially make a big run. But uh, what's it been like uh, working with this group this season and dealing with all the uh, obstacles that uh, you've had to deal with to be able to play this year? Honestly, the, the obstacles have been um, have been such a small piece of it. Um, this, this has been a, a great group to work with this year. Um, you know, like the girls have said, we returned, you know, almost our entire group from last year. Um, so it's, it's a bunch of players that I've had since they were all freshmen and sophomores and they have shown such tremendous growth. Um, you know, certainly from, from two years ago, but, you know, especially from last year where, you know, I, I think that, you know, they're, they're playing with so much more confidence. Um, the ball is moving, you know, on, on offense so much more smoothly. Um, their, their, their communication and their, their trust in each other. Uh, it's so evident. These girls spend so much time together, not just during the season, but even, you know, even off the season um, that, you know, the, the, the chemistry is so evident. You can, you can see it really spill over on the court. So uh, I, I honestly, I couldn't ask for a, a better group. Well, it's certainly uh, some great talent on this team. Uh, so we'll go around the uh, table to the players once again. Um, Millie, what's been the uh, toughest change for you this season? Uh, obviously, there's the fact that you got to wear masks when you're out there. And I know uh, some of the warm up procedures have changed. And of course, the halftime shorter. Uh, is there any of these changes that you've uh, found particularly difficult to work with? Um. I would say that um, during the games, especially, we're not allowed to like pick anyone up or high five anyone. And that's been difficult because I love supporting my teammates. So that's definitely been very difficult, especially during practice, too. And Caroline, how about you with uh, the changes? Anything that's been particularly difficult for you to work with? Um, I think definitely the masks. It can be hard to breathe and even <clears throat> just hear like our teammates at times. But um, a big one, I would say, is probably just like, the social aspect um, outside of being on the court. Um, our team, especially returning, like all our players, we're just always super, super close and hang out all the time, like during our um, off season. So I think not having um, like our spaghetti dinners and just team hangouts and sleepovers have been tough, but we haven't let that impact us at all because we're still very close. We're very loud and talkative, as I'm sure coach knows. We're always like dying laughing in practices. <laughs> now, do you ever have to go off to the side? <laughs> what was that, coach? So the bus ride sing alongs on the way home or something, oh, yeah. to, something special. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you ever have to go off to the side and kind of like just pull the mask up for a minute and just breathe some fresh air <laughs> sometimes I mean it can be hard because obviously we have to keep them on but it's really not bad thankfully coach doesn't have us running sprints all the time so I think that he definitely takes that into account which is nice as long as the refs don't see right <laughs> Uh, Lulu, how about you? Uh, what's been some of the uh, toughest obstacles uh, that you've had to deal with this season with the changes because of the COVID-19 pandemic? Um, one of the things that's definitely different is the pregame ritual. Like we have like 
certain like traditions and like kind of like a routine that we had going like we would and then also like the posters that coach Greco would make like that really got us ready for the game and it's kind of like just like straight to business now which like in a way I guess is nice because it's just like we get straight to it but also it was something that we had done before every game for the past two years so it is definitely different and uh coach uh, you had a couple games uh, against Norwood last week and very close entertaining games as well. Uh, what are some of the things that you uh, realized during those games that uh, the team needs to work on? And uh, how would you say uh, the overall performance was against Norwood? I mean, I couldn't be prouder of the kids for the way they played. Um, you know, I, I think the first thing that I saw was the – the difference in the girls this year from last year in terms of just their, their mental toughness and their confidence in themselves. Um, you know, it starts, starts with the seniors on down that, uh, you know, there, there's certain there's things to clean up in every game. You know, I know we got out rebounded in that game. That's something we talked about a lot, but, you know, we did a real good job of taking care of the basketball. Um, you know, we came back in the, the second game and um, was able to turn Norwood over a few extra times. And uh, we shot a little bit better from the free throw line. So, you know, there, there were a couple of little things, you know, there were two closed games. Norwood is an excellent team there, you know, obviously two time defending champs in the TVL. So, you know, to, to play them tough twice, um, I think just really speaks to how hard the girls have worked for the past two years to, you know, kind of get back to this level. And uh, coach, I know the rosters had to be cut down a little bit this year to 12 players rather than the typical 15. Uh, was there any, uh, hard cuts that you had to make because of that. And I know every cut's a hard cut, but is there uh, any cuts that you made that you probably typically uh, wouldn't have had to make because of the rosters being cut down? Uh, fortunately, no. Um, you know, we, like I said, we, we returned everybody. Um, we, the way we kind of just worked it out this year is we kept all the juniors and seniors up on the varsity. Um, you know, we kept a real small uh, JV group. We've been practicing, you know, all together with the JV ones and the, and the varsity team. So we've had, you know, plenty of, plenty of fresh legs at practice and stuff like that. And, you know, it lets the JV kids see what a varsity practice is like. And, you know, they get to learn from a great group of upperclassmen as well. So, um, you know, fortunately I didn't, I didn't have that situation this year. Um, but, you know, but it certainly, you know, has come up in the past and you're right, you know, cutting a kid is, is never fun. It certainly is. And, and, um, Obviously, the season had a later start this year. Was there any uh, homework that you gave your players when we were in the midst of the uh, remote learning and, and practices uh, weren't able to happen? I should have. I should have. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't because it was never – it never felt uh, certain that it was actually going to come about. And, uh, and, again, I knew I was in a situation where – these kids had all played for me for, you know, not just for one year, but for two and three years before. So, um, you know, I, I knew we'd be able to hit the ground running without too much of trouble. All right. And uh, I'm curious, uh, especially for the players, what are some of the things that you did during this uh, whole remote learning lockdown situation we just had? Uh, Millie, we'll start with you. What are, what are some of the things that you ended up doing when uh, we, we all had to spend all this time at home? Um, definitely practicing a lot of basketball. Um, I have a hoop in my driveway, so I would try to get out as much as I can. Um, I also have a shooting machine, so I was using that as well, which is definitely a benefit. Um, but yeah, definitely trying to get on the driveway, um, as much as possible. All right, Caroline. And I'm sure your coach likes uh, what you just said there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Caroline, how about you? Yeah, I was actually going to say something very similar to Millie. I think that, um, especially when we were doing, um, school over zoom it could be hard to kind of be cooped up like in your room all day and even just in your house with your family at times so just getting outside and um either like going for a run or um getting some shots up is not only like enjoyable but it's just nice to get out of the house for once all right and uh lou how about you yeah we did have the shooting challenge like through the basketball program then I was definitely also forced on a few family walks, as I'm sure a lot of other people can relate to. Excellent. Um, so it sounds like you all stayed active during this uh, time of lockdown. Uh, so do you have any uh, plans to uh, play other sports this year or play in college? 
uh, Millie? Um, I also play volleyball. Um, and our season got pushed back to like around the spring time. Um, I think that tryouts are February 22nd. So I'm excited about that. I still hope that we have a season. It, it'll probably be a little different going from basketball to volleyball rather than vice yeah, versa. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Caroline, how about you? Any future athletic plans? Um, I've done unified track in the past, which I loved. So I'm hoping that we're going to have even like basketball, a shortened season, but, um, I definitely can't picture my life without basketball and just the whole team aspect and the leadership skills that I've gained from it. Um, so I'm hoping to play either club basketball or one of the schools that I'm looking at is really big on intramurals. So I think it'd be fun to get like a team of 3v3 or even just 5v5. That's terrific. Uh, Lulu, how about you? Um, yeah, I've played softball in the past, but we didn't have a season last year. So we'll see what happens with that. Yeah. All right. Maybe we'll see you out there this spring. Uh, Coach, how about you? Uh, what are some of the things that you did uh, during the lockdown period? Uh, was there any uh, game planning or were you drawing up some plays? What are some of the things that you ended up doing? Uh well, most of my time was spent chasing my two toddlers around. Um, that's, that's, you know, enough to keep anybody, you know, busy and exhausted. But uh, as far as basketball is concerned, um, you know, like Lulu said, we had a, uh, a shooting challenge that was going on for a couple of months called the 10,000 shot uh, challenge. Um, so I was running that. Uh, but I'm always looking for, you know, ways to get better as a coach, you know, different uh, offenses or plays or, you know, tips you can pick up along the way. All right. That's terrific. And um, how, how good did it feel just to get back out there and be back in the athletic center coach? Oh, it felt great. It felt great, especially with these kids. It felt great. That's terrific. Uh, well, we're certainly glad that basketball is back and uh, hopefully uh, it will continue. Obviously a little bit of a difficult time right now, but hopefully we'll see some more games this year. Uh, and I'm just curious for any of the players, is there any particular opponent that you are looking forward to, especially seeing this year and any particular opponent that you're going to miss not playing this year. And anybody could just uh, jump in. I think that Medway has always been like a game that we looked forward to because um, and like for the past two years, we always had so many close games with them, but we never really like, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if we ever beat them. But it was always really close. We went into overtime with them last year, I know. But that was that's definitely a game we'll miss. We're going to have to go back in the archives and look up uh, yeah. if you've beat them or not. I know all those games have been very close. Uh, I've done a lot of Medway Hopkinton games between uh, my radio gig and TV gig, obviously. And they're always terrific games. So I I'd say that's a great choice. Uh, Caroline or Millie, what about you? Any particular opponent that you're happy to see this year or any particular opponent that uh, you're going to miss? I would definitely say Medfield. Um, I think since our freshman year, like they've always just been a big competitor. Um, and I think one year we ended up knocking them out of the playoffs and then another year, like they ended up knocking us out of the playoffs. So um, we definitely always look forward to playing them and they are in our schedule so um, hopefully those will be some games that we can get. Oh, yeah. Nothing beats a good uh, Hopkinton uh, medfield battle for sure. Um, I definitely agree with both Medway um, and Medfield. I think that we're just really lucky that we always have good competition um, within the Tri-Valley League. So it would be nice to get some good wins against them this season. And, Coach, I got to ask you, any particular uh, opponent that you're looking forward to see or any particular opponent that you're going to miss not seeing this year? Uh, they're all, they're all tough. They're all tough. I'm I'm just happy we to play games. Absolutely, that's the most important thing, and I'm happy uh, that you all get to get out uh, onto the courts and play some basketball. And hopefully, we'll see a lot more basketball this year. Uh, thanks so much for joining us on the show. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Bryce trying to feed it up top, stolen away. Quick break for the Hillers to the rack, off the glass, and in goes Lulu Murphy, and she draws the contact. The second game this past Friday night was the Varsity Girls game. It was a back and forth first half. The Hillers led after the first two quarters, 20 to 19. 
Show up to Hedstrom. Great defensive effort by the Hillers. Murphy feeds it out to Cho, up for three. Count it! Lauren wow. Cho knocking it down. Oh boy. 16 to six Hillers. Hopkinton added another 12 points in the third quarter and outscored Norwood 12 to 10 to increase their lead to three points. Here comes Cho. Round the defender. Good feed to the block. Up and in, Fossbender. The fourth quarter, however, was all Norwood. They outscored Hopkinton 9-4 and would end up taking the game 38-36. Lauren Cho had a team-high 12 points for the Hillers, while Kiki Fossbender added 8 points. Lexi Trendle also pitched in with 9 points of her own. Hello, everyone, and welcome into HCAM Sports Talk Live. We hope you enjoyed our interview with Hopkinton Hillers Girls Varsity Head Coach Mike Greco, along with the team captains this year. It was certainly a lot of fun to talk to them. For this segment, I am joined by Mike Tarosian, Bob Hamilton, and Andrew Barron. We're going to talk some pro sports going on. We'll have our football picks, plus a whole lot more. Guys, how you doing? Doing well. I'm not in trouble with you, am I? Because whenever I'm in trouble, somebody calls me Andrew. So, you know. <laughs> I said Andy. No, you didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> I thought he was in trouble. <laughs> Andrew, I'm well, glad well, you're with you us are. today. <laughs> Let's see. Were you in trouble with your picks last week? No, I, I think I went undefeated. I went 4-0. I, oh. I went undefeated. I think you did. No, yeah. you did not pick the Browns. No, no, no. no. <laughs> oh wait, they lost. That's right. You did go four and zero. I can't believe the Browns lost that game. Yeah, you get, you get Mahomes knocked out. We huh? go three and one, Tom. You get Mahomes knocked out of the game, and somehow you still end up losing. You had every opportunity in that one to win. Uh, the Kansas City quarterback, their backup, threw the worst interception I think I've ever seen in the history of the NFL. And uh, then you get them on third and 14. Third and 14. You just have to stop them one more time, and you can't do it. You know – Or two I, more times, technically. I, I have to say I am not a fan of Kansas City, but I got to give them a lot of credit how they won that game. They won ugly. And I don't think they have won ugly. I have not seen them win that way. You know, the Patriots used to win like that a lot, too, in the playoffs – Listen, Chad Henney was literally thrown into the fire. I mean, Patrick Mahomes is that franchise. And yes, they lost, they, they, you know, it's a tough situation. Who knows what's going to happen this week? But I have to give the Chiefs credit. They very easily could have lost that game. Yes, they certainly could have. I thought they were going to. It was looking good for the Browns. <laughs> and, you know, what would be more 2020 than a Bills Browns AFC championship? <laughs> Yeah, I right. thought it was perfect for the way this year has been. But yeah. Kansas City still somehow pulled it off. Really They're good. hanging around. And I'd imagine they'll let Mahomes play next week since it is the AFC Championship. Even though he still might have some lingering symptoms of the concussion, I'd imagine he'll be out there. But obviously they are very protective uh, with the concussion symptoms. And when you saw his face when he got up, he had no clue where he was. He looked like he just got knocked out in a UFC fight. It was pretty unbelievable. Oh, he was like stumbling all over the place. I mean, that was not good. No. It was not good. And at first I thought it was a leg injury because he couldn't even really walk. But then I realized he was just like out, like pretty much unconscious almost. I knew he wasn't coming back into that game. Not after that hit. If they let him back in, then, uh, you know, I think uh, – there would need to be a phone call made to Goodell for endangering players. But anyways, in picks last week, it was Jared and Andy going four and O oh. I unfortunately picked Baltimore. I don't know why I doubted Buffalo, but I did. Yeah, I did it, and Bob, you also picked Baltimore. So we went three and one. So we were the big losers last week and uh, Jared and Andy won. Mike didn't pick. So Mike went O oh and four. What did I pick? I sent you my picks. Did you? Yeah. Right yeah. after the game, he said. Yeah. 
He sent him in Sunday night. I, I picked everybody, but uh, I, I picked everyone, uh, and I picked the Ravens, so I went three and one. All right, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll look for that either. Three and one. That's the best you're going to get, though. You're not getting four oh, and all. No, I know I'm not getting four and all because, again, I was shocked that I didn't believe in the Bills. And uh, I wish uh, the Bills, they, they're the real deal. They played, yeah. they played good last week, yeah. and – I think uh, they're going to give Kansas City a run. I, I think that's they're going to make that a game. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a high-scoring game, I think. It should be interesting. So you don't think that there's a possibility that the Bills and the Bucks could meet in the uh, Super Bowl? Oh, I think there's definitely a possibility. Anything's possible, Bob. Anything. Yeah, but it won't, it won't match our picks if it does. Yeah. <laughs> That would be the Bills' worst nightmare. That's huh. what I mean. Eh? Facing Brady and the no. Nah. We shall see. It'll be interesting. Let's get right into it. Let's pick those conference championship games. Because why not? Uh, two great ones, and we pretty much, if you've been uh, looking at our Super Bowl picks, I, I think has. Let's see. Has anyone's Super Bowl pick got eliminated yet? Let's let's bowl picks here. See if we can get those on there. See, let's see if we can make fun of anyone yet. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, you know who I'm going with this week: Tampa and Kansas City. Uh, let's see, Jared. Ah, uh, Jared had Buffalo and Green Bay. So his AFC team's gone. Andy, your picks are very much alive. Uh, yep. Kevin's is still very. Oh no, Kevin had Buffalo. So they're. Oh no, wait, Buffalo's still around. What am I talking about? Yeah. yeah yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. Don't mind me. Yeah, so everyone's picks are still still alive. No one's gotten eliminated yet. So everyone is still in the mix with their this su- weekend separates the men from the boys. Yeah, that's pretty good. We're on the final four, and all of our Super Bowl picks are still alive. So that we should know our picks for today, right? We should, but we'll still go around the table and talk I, about I, the games. I'm still that's what we do, that. Mike. I'm not we talk, we talk I'm sports gonna... on this show. We don't just <laughs> give our picks. We have to give our reasoning and – Talk about right. the game and why the people the people want to hear what we have to say. And of course, a lot of money depends on it. That's right. There's yeah. there's people that are putting their their uh, weekly paychecks on yeah. things that we say. So we have to steer them in the right direction, which we, which we do not condone. And by the way, uh, ladies and gentlemen, do not put your weekly paychecks on anything we say. It's not a good idea. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, because I got no idea. <laughs> These are the views of the viewers, the, the participants alone, not any reflection on HCAM TV or any affiliate of HCAM TV. There we et go. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, Andy, was, was the cat trying to get a, uh, a pick in? <laughs> oh, yeah, she's a, uh, she wants to get on TV. So, <laughs> there she is right there. Yeah, she's a Bella. She's a beautiful cat. She's very excited. So, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Put her on. She could pick some games. She sure Andy could. Brought back up today. Yeah, she's like a. She looks like a, a kind of like a bobcat, like a bangle almost. Oh, so. uh, <laughs> too bad the bangles aren't in. You know, she probably. Those bangles. <laughs> well, you, what you got to do is you got to have two food dishes, and you know, put one team's logo on one of them, and the other team's logo on another one. See what one she goes to. Yeah, well, I have two cats, so they're always <laughs> they're always fighting about something. <laughs> All right, so uh, both games this week are going to be on Sunday, of course, Conference Championship Sunday. The 305 game, we have Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. I'm sticking with Tampa. I think they're going to win the Super Bowl. Uh, I think this is going to be a great game. We're going to be very close. But uh, the Buccaneers, they beat the Packers earlier in the season, 38-10. to 10. And I think the Bucs are going to be ready for this. And this past Sunday, that was one of the best games I've seen the Bucs play all season. I thought their defense was really good. Uh, I thought part of the reason that they kind of dominated towards the end was Drew Brees was not good. But the defense was very good. The receivers were very good. An impressive win uh, for Tampa Bay this past Sunday. Andy, what are your thoughts? Well, it really was. Uh, they, I'm not surprised they won. Um, you know, I thought they were kind of on the ropes there. And you cannot beat a football team when you turn over the ball four times. You just can't. You can't. I mean, the Saints were starting to get some momentum. Boom, Jared Cook fumbles, and that was it. 
They, they could not recover. Uh, that's probably the end of Drew Brees, a phenomenal career and whatnot. But this is what Tom Brady does. He wins. He finds a way. And uh, the Bucks find a way. However, I just think Aaron Rodgers is playing at a completely different level right now. Now, let's make no mistake. There's only one Tom Brady. Okay? And I'm going to get really – there's no comparison with Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. Look, he's a phenomenal player, but there's only one Tom Brady. Again, 14 championship games is out of this world. I mean, no one's ever going to probably do that again, but it's in Lambeau. Um, I believe my brother-in-law is going to the game because he lives in Wisconsin. He called me last week, so he's going to get hopefully be going. Now that's a hot ticket. Yeah. Oh, yeah. About 9,000 fans, I believe, are being let in. I just think, listen – the weather is going to be a factor. And I know Tom Brady's not going to be intimidated, but the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, as a history, have never played well in this weather. You know, Kurt Warner was saying this the other day about how, well, the playoffs should be should be played in the Dome. No. Win more games, okay? And Tom Brady shut that down real quick. It's about who's going to execute. I won't be shocked if Tampa Bay wins this game. I just think the Packers, you got to admit, they look really, really good. I mean, that Rams defense was no joke last week either. I mean, they did give Aaron Rodgers a few problems, but boom, he makes a big play. I just – I still think Tampa Bay is going to be good. And honestly, this might be Aaron Rodgers' last chance because he's had some bad playoff losses these last few years. All the pressure is on Green Bay. I still think Tampa is going to be good next year regardless. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Brady's returning next year to Tampa. He's already mentioned that. They're going to have most of their receivers back, if not all of them, and maybe Edelman, who knows. Uh, so I think they are going to be good next year. Green Bay is going to make this a game, I think. I mean, it's 90% of the time when Brady and Rodgers have met up, it's been a battle. You know, It might even be 95% of the time. The last time they met up, it was Tampa Bay domination. I don't think that happens this time. No. You're going to Green Bay. You're in the cold weather. It's going to be like 20 degrees. It might even be snowing. So this is going to be a game. And uh, Tampa Bay, I mean, I, I'm, I would say I'm worried about them more playing in this weather because they're not used to it. Green Bay practically plays in this weather every week. So I think weather could be a factor. Um, but I never underestimate Tom Brady. I think – They'll take it, but I think this is going to be a really close game. Uh, Mike, what are your thoughts? Yeah, you know, I'm still sticking with my picks. I'm still going with Tampa. Uh, however, you know, nothing spells. I mean, you look up home field advantage in the dictionary, there's a picture of the Packers in Lambeau Field, right? It, I mean, you got the whole team that knows how to play there throughout thick and thin. You got Tampa Bay. Yeah, they got Tom Brady who can handle the weather. But you don't have the whole Tampa Bay team and staff that can handle this weather. Now, another cool fun fact, this is the first Green Bay uh, NFC Championship with uh, Rodgers at center, under center. This is first NFC Championship at Lambeau. And, you know, if there's something that wants to make me change my picks right now, it would be game at, uh, Packers at Lambeau, Aaron's first NFC Championship. That would make me want to change it, but I'm going to stick true to my picks. All right. There you go, <laughs> Bob. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, both you and Andy you touched on it. It's uh, the weather's going to be a factor. I, from what I can tell, I think the forecast for Sunday in uh, green Bay is snow. I don't know how much snow, but green Bay, it doesn't matter if it snows, you're going to get enough to bother somebody. Although you get a, I kind of balance that off with the fact that, Brady played in New England for a lot of years, so he's not a stranger to snow. But the rest of the Tampa Bay Bucks, who knows? I, it, it's really a question in my mind about uh, Tampa Bay's defense, what they can do against Aaron Rodgers. And I don't know if that secondary can handle them. But since I'm a man of my word, I went with Tampa Bay. So I'm going to stick with Tampa Bay winning this one. But it's going to be a nail biter the whole way. All right. Yeah, I think you're right. Bob, just to help you out, 29 degrees, snow showers, 40% chance, starting around 4 p.m. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's going to be severe snow showers. I think yeah. it'll probably just be squalls, um, but it's going to be cold, yep. and it is going to be a frozen tundra that day for sure. Uh, I think the weather will certainly be a factor, but as you said, Bob, Brady is certainly – played in an enough cold weather throughout his career although i'm sure his blood's a little thinner right now since he's been in tampa all this time for pretty much the whole year now 
Uh, He's probably been sleeping in the refrigerator to get ready for it. But I just, you know, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. He probably has. He, he probably has a conditioned chamber that just allows him to get uh, ready for the weather. Uh, you know, it really wouldn't surprise me if he did that. Just real quick. You know, this really could come back to question if Tampa Bay does lose this game when they were just horrendous in the middle of the season. Now, they, I know they blew, they blew Green Bay out, but two things. Green Bay is going to be out for this. But I think you, you can definitely can question this if Tampa loses this because if they were playing like this throughout the year, this game's in Florida, and that is a major difference. Yeah, so, yeah I mean, you got you know, to keep in mind, though, it was Brady's first year. They had to make a lot of transition. And when you're just getting a new quarterback and a pretty much a new system in place, because their system this year was very different from what they had with Jameis Winston, it takes some transition time. And it's not like you started off the, the year playing a cupcake. You started it off against the Saints. That's a that's a pretty tall task right there. Sure, sure, without a doubt. It's just that there has been so much hype for this team this year. And I'm sorry, if they, if they lose tomorrow, if they lose Sunday, it's a major disappointment. I mean, you you they everyone's saying this team's going to win the Super Bowl, which they very well could. But I'm just saying it's just – well, I'll wow. tell you what, the fans in Tampa won't be that disappointed because they don't have the opportunity to play in this game a whole lot. That's true. They, yeah. they haven't been in this game since, what, 2002, where they won the Super Bowl that year. Uh, so I don't think Brady could disappoint the Tampa fans at this point. Uh, you know, if this was a Patriots team in this game, then it's probably a disappointment with Brady's at the helm because we have such high expectations here. But a, a team like Tampa, I don't think the expectations are too high. Of course, they want him to win. Of course, he'll be sad if they if he loses. But I think a lot of those fans are probably just grateful he's here. All right. So we got the AFC Championship game. 6.40 p.m. start time for this one. I think this is going to be a great battle. Buffalo Bills taking on the Kansas City Chiefs at Arrowhead Stadium. You know, part of me was really wanting that Bills-Browns matchup. I really was I, I was looking forward to that if it was going to happen. Um, and plus, you know, I mean, who wants to see Mahomes win another Super Bowl? Come on now. So uh, the Chiefs ended up skating by the Browns, hanging on for their dear lives to advance to this game. They get to host the Bills. Pat Mahomes is back. You know, I picked the Chiefs to win this game before. I'll stick with that pick. But my big question is, what's the Mahomes situation? That He took a big hit last week. This guy was knocked out unconscious. Is he going to be able to play? I'd imagine. But I think one little tap to the head in this game might not be good. And you might see him uh, get knocked out again because typically – when players have a concussion like he just had, they're very careful with them because they have to be. They have to protect these guys, especially a superstar like Pat Mahomes. So I think what the Bills should do is uh, <laughs> is rush, rush, and rush and, and try to knock Mahomes down as many times as you can. Be physical with the guy. Try to knock him out of the game if you can. Uh, but I think Kansas City is going to win this game. That offense is just amazing. But the Bills' defense is really good. And they played Baltimore excellent last week. I think they played Lamar Jackson better than pretty much anyone else that we've seen. It was a great performance. I think this game is going to be a really close game that goes all the way to the end. I'd like to see Buffalo win, but I think Kansas City is going to win. Mike, what do you think? Well, I'm with you, too. I'm, again, I'm sticking my points. Yeah, am I concerned about Mahomes and everything? Absolutely. I think he will suit up and, and get in there. If the, if he doesn't suit up when I turn on the game on Sunday, I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be sweating it. Um, Buffalo, fantastic. I mean, they held the Ravens to what three points last week? Was it three? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, yes. yeah. yeah. I and, think it was the last second touchdown for Baltimore. But with, yeah. with that, yeah, with that and in the uh, the Chiefs. Uh, uh, has it scored over 22 know, points three. in three games? Yeah. No? So, could it change? Again, I, I, I'm sticking with my – it could go either way. I'm still hoping that my picks win because I want the bragging rights. So, I'm, I'm sticking with that. I'm sticking with uh, the Chiefs. 
All right, Andy, what do you think? Well, you know, uh, the Bills, hey, they've earned the right to be here, and they've, they've, uh, they're going to be good for, uh, I'd say, probably the, the next five years or so at least. They have all the pieces in place. But, I, again, I, just, I was just impressed the way Kansas City won last week. You know, they could have easily folded up. Oh, well, our, star, our franchise quarterback's out. Forget it. It's over. No, they battled. They battled right to the end. And that Browns team is going in the right direction. Bob and I were talking about that before we came on. So, I mean, you know, I, I think right now, I, I just don't think the Bills are quite ready yet. Listen, Arrowhead Stadium is one of the toughest places to play in the NFL. And it just makes that win that the Patriots had there a few years ago just that much all more amazing. This is now the third straight year that the Chiefs have hosted the AFC title game at home. Only Philadelphia did that. Uh, as well so it's an amazing accomplishment even if Mahomes doesn't play yeah Buffalo's chances are are that much better but Chad Henney is a legit backup and look at all the the talent he has around him I still think the Chiefs are going to figure it out I just think they're just they're just too good obviously Mahomes plays but could we see a situation where he he could be limited a little bit too I mean right. where, Look, a concussion is nothing to joke around with. No, really. especially I mean, nowadays. When yeah, we... you're right, Tom. Exactly. And just with all the, the stuff the NFL has thrown with concussions, and, and if they let Mahomes play and he somehow just doesn't look right, that is a bad look for the league. And it's a bad look for the Chiefs, too. And I thought Andy Reid really did a good job this week questioning it. It's up to the medical, uh, you know, the medical doctors and whatnot. He didn't really want to get there. And, look, Patrick Mahomes is a phenomenal player and I think he gets another Super Bowl he's going to start separating himself from like Rodgers and Wilson and Breeze because he's he still hasn't played enough to but this guy definitely has potential to win multiple Super Bowls there's no doubt about it you, you know if I'm a Mahomes fan though I am concerned about the hits he takes because he takes take a lot bad yeah. hits and he's a strong guy he's a fast guy he's a heck of an athlete but he's not a big guy and he's taking some big hits from big guys and he's had some issues. He's had some injury issues at this uh, early part of his career. So I would certainly worry about that a little bit. I think they need to be a little more conservative with him. And I know he's so good at running with the ball, but I think you, you need to be a little more conservative with them in the future. If you're Kansas city, I mean, now you're in the AFC championship uh, and maybe the Super Bowl, So it's all out, but during the season, you gotta be more conservative with this guy, Bob, what are your thoughts? Kansas city, Buffalo. Yeah, I, I've been a big fan, and I use the term loosely, of uh, Buffalo this year. They've really played well, and they've, as Andy said, they've earned their right to be there. And they do have a strong defense, and you saw it against the Ravens. And my concern, like everybody else's, is is Mahomes going to come out and be sharp, or is he going to get hammered the first quarter? And if Buffalo sees a chance to get after him and shake him, and he's not as quick on his feet or he doesn't dance as much – they can get to them. And if that happens, I still think that uh, Kansas City is going to have a tough time beating Buffalo. The, the, it's just that they have such a powerful offense over and above Mahomes. I mean, yeah, he runs it. He makes a lot of good things happen. He gets some first downs when they need it. But uh, I'm going to stick with Kansas City, but it's going to be a real, real challenge for Buffalo if Mahomes is 100%. If he comes out and he's only 70%, then there's a lot of questions. Why are they letting him in there? And they right. shouldn't. Uh, they've got a strong protocol in place, and they shouldn't uh, violate any of those uh, requirements for uh, concussion to just let him play in this game. He's got, as Andy said, he's got a long career ahead of him, and it looks good. And if you ruin him in this one game, that could be the end of his career. So I'm picking the Chiefs to win, whether Mahone's in there or not. All right. There you have it. And yeah, I think uh, that's a good point uh, you bring up about, you know, being careful with them. But the good thing is for the players, as much as the players probably don't like this at times, the NFL, they implemented those independent neurologists to make sure mm -hmm. that the players are good to be out there. And this was a smart move by the league. It was one of the things they did to protect the players and they did this because they don't want teams deciding if the player should go back out there and they don't want the player deciding if he should go back out there. They want to decide. And if they see any concussion symptoms, uh, they don't let that player back on the field. And we saw it a couple times last week. We saw it with Lamar Jackson in the Baltimore game. 
he clearly suffered a, a concussion. He wasn't dazed like Mahomes. He got up and was moving around, looked okay. Mahomes looked like he didn't know where he was. Yeah. Uh, with Jackson, it was really questionable if he'd be back out there or not, since he seemed to be okay and running around. He was running up and down the sideline a few times. Um, so I wouldn't have been too surprised if he came back. Uh, if Mahomes came back, I would have been very surprised. As soon as I saw that blank look on his face, I said, if these guys are truly independent neurologists, there's no way he comes back into this game. And they clearly are truly independent neurologists because I'm sure – uh, behind the scenes, Mahomes wanted to get back in that game. I'm, I'm sure he did. I'm sure he was trying to fight to get back in there, but the neurologist said, nope, not a chance. And it was what it was. But I think uh, it's a good call by the NFL having those independent neurologists because you really don't want the teams or the players deciding to go back in the game because, you know, with the competitive nature of most, they'll, they'll go back in the game even if it's not necessarily good for them. I will make this prediction too. If Kansas City does win this game without Mahomes, then they're going to win the whole thing, because then it's going to. How do you beat them then? Really? I mean, if they win it without Mahomes, if yeah. they if they win this game without Mahomes, how how are they going to lose the Super Bowl? If really? they win this game without Mahomes, that would be disappointing on Buffalo because right. you're missing a big piece of your offense right. yeah. there uh, without Mahomes. It's not like they had to play the Browns totally without Mahomes. Uh, they had to play like the last quarter and a half without them. And that was still a big accomplishment, but I thought the Browns were terrible in that quarter and a half. Yeah. And if they played just a little bit better, they should have won that game. But I would be shocked if Mahomes sits out this game and the bills don't win. And, you know, obviously I'll change all our picks to Buffalo if Mahomes is out for this game because, I mean, who wouldn't be shocked by that? Watch this other matchup too, Travis Kelsey. Buffalo has been terrible with tight ends in this playoffs. Yeah. This guy is on a different level. Whether I'm not a fan of him, but, I mean, again, he just looks unstoppable at times on the field. That is, oh, a yeah. huge, that is going to be a huge, huge matchup regardless. You know, um, I don't know how you can stop that guy. Really? Oh, first, first off, if we if Mahomes makes it to the Super Bowl, I mean, if they, Kansas City makes it without Mahomes in the Super Bowl, how do the uh, Tampa Bay win? Well, they win with Brady, I think, if they're going up against Brady. However, if they make it to the Super Bowl without Mahomes, who starts on Super Bowl? Oh, well, man. if Mahomes clears the protocols, oh, yeah. he'll yeah. start. There's he'll no start. question about it. Well, uh, I yeah, I mean, you got two weeks before the Super Bowl. Right. And I don't want to get off. into that. That's too far down the road <laughs> right now. Uh, sure. Don't likely have Mahomes for this game. I remember this guy named Bledsoe once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just – I don't think the NFL can go wrong either way on whoever gets the Super Bowl either because – but I will say oh. Buffalo-Tampa Bay is fascinating because of two things. One – Buffalo, I mean, first of all, Tampa Bay were the first team to ever host on their home field. Number two, Buffalo had the worst loss in the history of their organization when they lost their first Super Bowl in Tampa Bay. Oh, yeah, and they got to beat Tom Brady to do it, who's only beaten the Bills 33 times in his career. I mean, if you're a Bills fan, you must have to be like, can we – we got Tom Brady out of our division. Oh, we yeah. still got to beat him to win the Super Bowl. Yeah. I that, mean – That would be their luck, too. That would <laughs> totally be their luck. This guy again? I mean – that would be fascinating. Uh, f fascinating. The storylines are endless. Oh, they, they are. are. They're going now. I mean, all the memes that are out there with with uh, Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Uh, when I when I don't play in the AFC Championship, it's because I'm in the <laughs> NFC Championship. <laughs> Buffalo went to four straight Super Bowls, which is yeah. that is just honestly it, it yeah. incredible. That's I will never get over that. How do you go to four straight Super Bowls and lose them all, though? Better teams. But they, nobody was beating those Dallas teams. They yeah. were stacked. Well, that was... Washington team was stacked. They just ran in to better teams. And let's not forget, for them to get to those four Super Bowls, you had to be Joe Montana, John Elway, and right. Dan Marino. That is no easy task. No, for a Hall of Famous. But how heartbreaking is that? Go Jim to four Kelly straight was, Super Bowls and just keep losing. Jim everything. Kelly was a great – he was a great quarterback too. I oh, mean, definitely. Even to get there four straight times, that's unreal. unbelievable. It is. And it's funny when you look at the NFC East then and then you look at it now. Uh, what the heck happened in, to that division? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I think these are going to yeah. be two uh, really good games this weekend. I'm looking forward to them. And 
I think anything can happen really in any of them. Uh, I, there'll be no shocker to me. I mean, no. something that would shock me if Mahomes throws like three interceptions and Buffalo destroys Kansas City. That'd be shocking. But if Buffalo beats Kansas City by a field goal, that's not too shocking to me. I, I think you got four great teams there. Uh, and it's the four teams that I feel were playing uh, the best for the last half of the season, at least, are there. Uh, all four of these teams got red hot at the right time. Kansas City's pretty much been red hot all season. But I think all these teams uh, right now are peaking. I think they're all playing really good football. And I think we're going to get two really good conference championships this weekend. And, Tom, I think you can uh, go with the uh, – assumption that there will be no ties this weekend <laughs> yes <laughs> will there be an overtime that is oh, definitely that a possibility be, could be several could that be. is definitely a possibility yep. very well could happen <laughs> well it should be a, a lot of fun with these games uh this weekend but let's talk about uh tom brady for a second um he's in his 14th conference championship in his career that is unbelievable i don't i mean will that record ever be broken again by anybody i don't know maybe mahomes has a chance but that is pretty unbelievable 14th conference championship so if you're the new england patriots right now and you're watching brady go to the nfc championship with the bucks and that nice uh 13 and 5 record I think uh, it's pretty clear that Brady uh, won and Belichick lost <laughs> and the Patriots fans are the, are the losers here in this situation. And obviously I don't care what other Patriots fans say. There's a lot of them out there that are bitter and they don't want Brady to win. I want Brady to win. I'm rooting for the guy who's brought me too much joy in my life to not root for him. But clearly Belichick was wrong to let him go. And at this point, I don't think there's any doubt about that. They should have done whatever they possibly could to keep this guy here and found a way to make him happy. Well, Tom, I see where you're coming from, but I'm going to say this. I don't think they could have done anything to keep Tom Brady. I think he had his mind made up that he didn't want to be here anymore. I really think after that Philadelphia Super Bowl, he was livid. Because he played, he was incredible in that game, and the defense was atrocious. I really think from then on then, it was over. And, yes, they got another Super Bowl against the Rams, but a lot of that was on was on Bill. Listen, this goes both ways. All sides could have done better, and it looks bad on the Patriots right now. I have no ill will towards the guy. He has been phenomenal here. Six titles, I will never see that again. But at some point, listen, they wanted to move on from Tom Brady after they beat the Falcons. And then, and then you know, he, Jimmy Garoppolo was, was going to be the next guy. And then uh, Tom Brady, you know, got upset. He went to Bob Kraft. And then it just all just went downhill. Then Garoppolo left here for nothing. Well, that was they, Belichick who wanted to move on from Brady. Yeah, he did. I don't think Bob Kraft didn't. And, but I'm just no. saying, it, it just, when you get guys on this level, because let's face it, Kraft, Belichick, and Brady, they're the three best ever at, the, at their – at their uh, careers. It's not even really even close. There's going to be problems. And, and listen, again, I don't have any will towards the guy. If he wins a Super Bowl, eh, it's great, you know, but if he doesn't, he doesn't. I, I just, I'm still not ready to give up on the Patriots yet. Yeah, it doesn't look good right now, but you know, Hey, we're just a few players away. If I think from really getting back into this thing, cause let's not forget Tom Brady does a few players. Join. They don't have a quarterback. They don't have much They're of a defense. Get one. They don't have receivers. They don't have tight ends. They don't have anything. They're starting from scratch. I got no faith in the Patriots right now. I think they're a train wreck. I don't even think they know what they're doing. They don't even have a contingency plan at quarterback. I I think they're probably just going to blow it up and go all young because that's probably the best bet at this point. But they have nothing. I got no faith that they're going to fix this anytime soon. I think this is going to be a very long transition period. And if you just gave Brady what he wanted and you brought in some weapons and you spent a little money and you treated the guy a little better and you respected him, you might have him here still. You might have Gronk here still. You might have Edelman coming back. You might be bringing in, you know, you bring in more weapons. You might have some of your defensive guys hang around. I bet you have the defensive guys didn't come back because they said, you know what, Brady's leaving this year. They're going to be terrible, you know, so why risk getting COVID for this team? I'm going to take the year off and opt out. 
uh, because this team's going to be a train wreck. That's probably why you, that you lost so many of those players. But I'm sorry. I don't have confidence in the Pats right now. I don't think they know what they're doing. I don't, I don't think they have any idea what their next step's going to be. It's going to be a very interesting offseason. I guess we'll see what direction they want to go in. But to me, they had no plans for this happening. Well, and I that's why they had a season like they just did. I tell you real quickly, I think that, you know, it's – think of the Hillers when they graduate their 12 seniors off a team and how long it takes for them to start gelling again. I see the same thing here. I think I think one of the situations is is the draft picks coming up. You know, don't forget, too, we suffered uh, loss of draft picks for all that <coughs> cheating. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think, you know – I think that they just put their ducks in the row and they gave us Cam Newton uh, for a year just to try to please us because, you know, what else were they going to do? They lost Jimmy. Uh, so I, I feel that it's a stu- – they're going to rebuild. Hey, I, I bleed red and blue like the rest of you. We love our Patriots. But is it going to be a couple, three years before they're back to say it all glory and everyone around the country hating us again? Yeah, I, I'll give it three years. Oh, by the way, they're about to lose McDaniels too, so that's not going to help. Yeah. So, wow. <laughs> Big I mean, Belichick is what two years left, but yeah. I, I don't know. I really, I've never been so uncertain about the future of this team. Am I rooting for them? Do I hope they're good? Of course. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I was born and raised a Pats fan, but I hope I don't you don't ever root for me that way, Tom. That's the worst <laughs> rooting I ever heard of. Are you sure you're not talking about a fantasy league? <laughs> This is the NFL. They got to make changes or they die. So they had a long run with Brady and Belichick, which is unprecedented. But you can't stay in business in the NFL doing that. They had to move on from him at some point, and it was going to hurt. But I think that some of the moves they made after he was gone was what caused the most of the problems. They, they scrambled. I don't know who was in the front office trying to make decisions about we got to bring somebody in to take Brady's place. Well, that was you my point. They had no plan. Brady's place. They had no plan. That was the problem. They well, I don't think they ever thought he was plan. really going to leave. But but they, you know, they could be also looking at some sophomore down the road that they're waiting for to take place. So they're just filling us up with crap like Newton. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, it'll be a really interesting off season. That, that, that's for sure. I think there's a number of different roads they could go. If it was me, I would go try to get Deshaun Watson. Absolutely. I, yeah, I would do whatever changer. I could to get him. Game changer. But you still got to get him somebody to throw the ball to. But it all starts with your quarterback. That, oh, this is a quarterback-driven league. And like I said, I, I, I hope I hope Brady does do well, really. But he's not a Patriot anymore. I, I'm over it. I, and I was upset at first, but I kind of saw it coming. The writing was on the wall. And, and I know it looks bad, but it's just – they they just should have had a plan. I guess that was my main point. But they, you should have, you should look have at how long it took the Dolphins to replace Dan Marino. It took them how long? They had no plan when he left. The same was when John Elway left Denver. I mean, Joe Montana went to Miami Denver. since. Yeah, I, Please, say, I don't want to be that. Though. Don't let us turn into that. No, Come on, but man. look at this. Joe Montana went to Kansas City. Peyton Manning won a Super Bowl with Denver. These things yeah. happen. Right. I mean, they do. They do. But you know, to say that, you know, you're confident in the direction they're going, I don't know how you could be because I don't know what they're doing. You know, they, 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 got a lot of work. they got work to do. Oh, <laughs> a lot of work to do. And Belichick is a uh, record coaching uh, without Brady is under 500. So I'll just uh, have a little piece of information for you. Oh, that, was a nice, that was a nice stat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah that a dollar will get you a cup of coffee. <laughs> But, you know, can Belichick win without Brady? Uh, it's going to take a few years to find out, I think. Yeah. No, it's, not be, it's not going to be around long enough to find out. Yeah, probably not. By the way, we do have some uh, high school sports coming up on HCAM. It is a limited schedule. They had to uh, move some things around, unfortunately. But we'll have uh, middle school basketball coming up on Thursday night. Uh, Hopkinton Middle School girls basketball on Thursday night. So you'll be able to watch that live on HCAM as they take on Hopedale for 30 p.m. tip-off in that game. And then we have Varsity Alpine Skiing Thursday night, January 21st, 6.15 p.m. And then we'll have Freshman Girls Basketball on Friday against Millis at 3.30 p.m. tip-off for that one. But we are out of time. So for Bob Hamilton, Mike DeRosian, Andy Barron, I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for watching HCAM Sports Talk Live. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. We'll talk to you again soon.